Norci Çin bu tu denin ni şan zonni molum Çin bonga jada bagar don gam san tu yerma do tumba tukji jan la ki xiang sar shou me chu je yan ji bo dan na di sun san ji gun jing wo wen ye ran sum chu gun wo sum tong ze ta ve la ma nam la go xiang sar ri don jang wo yo ne xian la ne ye gun bo lu ni bo be ten zu do lo to jun ze jian zu ng ab dan cho ma bum jam yo nam jer la ki xiang sar good morning is everything good Yes. <clears throat> First of all, um, I would like to say welcome to all of you to uh, the the teaching, and uh, welcome to our new meditation center. Um, and good to see all of you again. And I hope uh, you're having uh, a great and happy life, uh, whatever you're doing. Um, this year uh, we'll be meeting here at Cloth and Water. Uh, we have this space, new space for, uh, for this year. Um, so I hope uh, you all like uh, practicing here and get together. Uh, we have uh, lots of teachings every month. We have um, one retreat and then two Saturday teachings uh, here. Uh, so um, uh, welcome again and very nice to see uh, all of you. Um, and uh, thank you uh, to Bodhicitta Sangha and uh, uh, thank you Kat uh, for finding this uh, space. We'll see. Uh, I think um, uh, it's nice. It's very nice. Uh, uh, easy to get here. Good location. Uh, beautiful uh, teaching space. Uh, so um, I think uh, uh, we all will um, enjoy here um, this year and meditate together. Uh, and uh, uh, I also uh, want to thank uh, Colin and Kelly uh, for the um, 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 organizing the lineage study group. Uh, I hope you all are enjoying learning uh, the uh, biographies of uh, the Dzogchen lineage. Um, uh, and uh, that um, uh, it is beneficial. Um, as you know, the Dzogchen lineage is very, very important uh, for us to understand, um, and especially uh, for those who are in the 37 group practice, uh, because um, very soon you are going to practice uh, the Dzogchen Great Perfection uh, when you finish your uh, preliminaries, all of that. So um, then it's uh, especially very important to understand the biographies of the lineage, the teachers, uh, because uh, you're going to practice Dzogchen. So the Dzogchen lineage is very uh, important uh, for us um, to understand. Um, so, um, uh, so uh, we all, uh, the teachers say, uh, we all possess the uh, capacity to become a, a very good human being um, and uh, to make our life happy. Uh, but in order to do that, we need uh, teachings uh, and we need uh, realization, not only uh, just teaching, but uh, uh, most important is to practice them. And then uh, uh, through the instructions, uh, so teaching means uh, uh, being shown the path uh, and being given the uh, transmission, right? 
and then uh, we apply that, um, and we follow that path, uh, and we try to uh, have realization. So uh, I can share um, a lot of uh, uh, teachings and um, especially very important uh, um, PD instructions um, with all of you. Uh, but uh, if you don't practice, then it, uh, it will be um, uh, uh, difficult to uh, achieve anything. Uh, so uh, teachers say, if you uh, don't eat when you need food, then your stomach is always empty. So once you have teaching, you have instruction, uh, that's important, but more important is you have to meditate, you have to practice, uh, you have to take responsibility uh, in order to become a good human being, good, become a good teacher, become a good, we all have that capacity. So one day uh, you should be able to teach, uh, uh, to help others, that's the best way to uh, do it. So therefore, uh, uh, it's uh, very important, so please, uh, please meditate, practice. That's very important. Don't say, I don't have time um, for practice. Don't say, uh, you know, practice is not so important. Um, so uh, listen, uh, Dharma teaching and all of this, receive these things uh, important, but more important is to practice. Everybody know how to practice. Everybody know their mind, uh, their emotions, all of that. So we have to, uh, that's, the, that's the thing. <laughs> so uh, um, that's kind of, uh, you know, update. And uh, today's teaching is called uh, uh, Advice for Beginners by um, Mepan Rinpoche. So you have that, uh, the little text, you have that heat. Uh, and uh, uh, Rinpoche, many of you know uh, him, but many of maybe you don't know him. So Mepan Rinpoche was very, very important uh, sort of Nyingma master. Very, very important. And, uh, you know, there are three, uh, uh, there were, um, what do you call it, Tang, uh, omniscient. There are three omniscient or three kunchin uh, in Tibetan means uh, like all knowing, all knowing masters uh, in the Nyingma lineage. Kunchin uh, namsam. Kunchin means like uh, all knowing, the omniscient. Namsam uh, means like three, three uh, knowing masters in the Nyingma lineage. So the uh, the uh, first one is Longchenba. You know that. And then second is Njigmi Langba. And then third is Mepham Rinpoche. So Kunchin Longchen Ramjim. Kunchin means again, all knowing. And then Kunchin Longchen Ramjim. And then Kunchin Njigmi Langba. Understand it. Kunchin means all knowing, omniscient master. And then Kunchin Mepham Rinpoche. So Mepham Rinpoche, uh, very important teacher in the Nyangma lineage. So we're, we're very fortunate to have him and his, his, his uh, teachings. And Mepha Rinpoche was a, a student of Papta Rinpoche and Jangan uh, Chintze Wambo. So Papta Rinpoche and Jangan Chintze Wambo, who are uh, the incarnation of Njigme Langba, so the uh, second, uh, uh, the all-knowing master, uh, Njigme Langba. So anyway, Mepha Rinpoche wrote uh, 27 uh, important volumes. Uh, so this one, this is a small text, but it contains the uh, essence of the entire uh, teaching of Buddha. Okay, so you will know. So in this sort of little, little text, uh, talks about, actually like talks about life. Okay, uh, life. So uh, I thought uh, maybe uh, this is good for us to practice. Uh, the, so therefore I picked this as my first teaching here. So because we all have a life, right? But uh, uh, 
it doesn't mean we have a good life, right? So uh, in order to have a good life, I think this teaching will be good for us. So uh, again, what is life? This text talks about life. So as you know, from the Buddhist point of view uh, on life, every time uh, when we talk about life, it's uh, something that goes around, korwa in Tibet, goes around, around. It means uh, this life is a continuation of becoming, uh, right? So that means that is the life. Life is also like temporary, uh, means like nothing is truly existing, temporary. Um, life also um, uh, impermanent. Right, it's it uh, means like it's always uh, taking different shapes, and uh, is very changeable. So uh, uh, life also means living beings um, who uh, uh, has a, a powerful mind, uh, living beings who has mind, and life also means the the state of intermediate, uh, which is something in between. Life means something in between. For example, right now, uh, this very moment we have uh, is in between uh, past and future. So right now, we are in between uh, the time when we are born and the time uh, when we die. Uh, so that's life, between, in between. So this is called uh, the, uh, uh, what do you call, intermediate state of this life, right? Intermediate state of this life. So as you know, according to uh, Buddhism, this is the most important moment that we have right now, uh, according to Buddhism. So uh, means what you do and how you handle this moment is all that matters. So that's why we need practice. So there, uh, um, so th th that's the life. Life is actually the many ways uh, explain about life, but all of this together, all of I said this together in Tibet, in Tibetan Korwa, or we can call samsara, Sanskrit, right? Samsara, you all know that, Korwa or samsara. So when we talk about our lives, samsara, samsara, Usually, when we think about life, when we think about samsara, usually we believe that our negative emotions are the root of suffering. They make us suffering. Uh, they make us uh, wonder in uh, korva, this samsara. Uh, because of that, we think uh, negative emotions are very bad, right? Very bad. However, on the other hand, uh, we wander in samsara because we don't recognize the essence of uh, negative emotions, the Buddha nature. That's why. Uh, however, these negative emotions prove to us that we have Buddha nature, if we investigate, if we recognize uh, their essence, the negative emotions. So for example, when you have a negative emotions, uh, they're the essence of your mind. When you investigate, negative emotions, you will see the, the negative emotions are, they, they, they are the, they are, the, they are, they are, they are not, uh, they are not the essence of the Buddha nature, uh, or uh, I can say like they are not essence of your mind. So if you, if you, uh, if you will keep sort of looking for the essence of your mind, uh, try to understand the essence of your mind, um, then eventually you will come to understand the true essence, which is Buddha nature. Therefore, when I say, you know, negative emotions 
prove that we have the Buddha nature. Otherwise, you know, um, you, you, you know, um, difficult to understand this. What, 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 what how, right? Uh, but, but because when you have negative emotions, for instance, ask yourself, is this essence of my mind? You will see no. Uh, you will understand that they are temporary, they are impermanent, they are not essence of your mind. Then what is the essence of my mind? You will recognize the Buddha nature. That is the essence of your mind. Uh, in the same way that um, teachers say, you know, seeing a smoke proves there uh, is a fire. Now, you might not see the fire, but smoke is an expression of fire. So uh, by seeing the smoke, you know it comes from the fire. So while uh, you may not uh, recognize your own Buddha nature, if you have uh, sort of negative emotions, but uh, you have Buddha nature because negative emotions are the expression of Buddha nature. Okay. So when I say when I say negative emotions are the expression of Buddha nature, um, you might have difficult to understand that um, uh, negative how negative emotions are. How come, like, uh, expressions of Buddha nature? Why? How? Right? Uh, but think of it this way. Uh, all, this, all these appearances are the expression of our mind or expression of our awareness. If you recognized uh, the appearances as the expression of our awareness or manifestation of our Buddha nature, then uh, we would experience it as a liberation, liberation. Um, but uh, because we have uh, negative emotions and we don't recognize their essence, and then we experience uh, these all these appearances as samsara, as as uh, as not not liberation, as samsara. So when we experience negative emotions and everything appears as samsara, as samsara, as korva, in that case, negative emotions are not good. So therefore, we have to try to, we have, you know, diminish and purify our negative emotions. Um, so anyway, uh, now uh, the, uh, I'm going to say the, the text, uh, the by uh, Mufan Rinpoche's, uh, so uh, in English, uh, you have that. So I'm, then I'm going to explain you a little bit about Chiho, all activities within samsara are pointless and hollow, uh, unreliable and fleeting, like uh, lightning striking dance. Um, in Tibetan, Chiho, Korwa, Shiawa, Kunla, Nyangbo, Mit, Korwa, Shiawa, Kunla, Nyangbo, Mit, uh, so these sentences is about uh, renunciation, uh, which is very important to understand. Mm -hmm. So um, renunciation has two uh, directions of looking. Um, on the one hand, uh, with such an attitude, uh, we look down at the suffering of samsara and understanding the difference of samsara. That's one thing, renunciation. Uh, uh, so then uh, we uh, wish to uh, be completely freed from suffering. Um, and on the other hand, we look up at all at the liberation uh, and understand the benefit of liberation and we wish to attain it. So that two sort of uh, uh, directions, two explanation, uh, uh, the uh, uh, renunciation uh, of looking. So um, Mohan which says uh, all activities within samsara are pointless. 
is this really true? That's the thing. All activities within samsara are pointless. Um, as long as we have not removed our bad habits, uh, I, I will put that that way, uh, bad habits, we will continue to wander in samsara without control. Because our bad habits cause us uh, not to recognize the true nature of samsara. So, you know, again, I think it is very important to recognize the meaning of life. Because we, uh, the people, you know, to, um, you know, have uh, power to make our lives meaningful. Uh, so life is, again, very important. Uh, so we all have to um, uh, understand, we all have to uh, appreciate our lives rather than sort of blame ourselves or blame others. Um, because this life, this world is good for everyone. Um, everyone possess this life, this world. Uh, so we have power to, uh, uh, the teachings say, you know, we have power to this, um, the, the, the make, make this world, make this life wonderful. We have power to do that. So we need uh, sort of kindness. We need a good motivation. Uh, that's the one thing, good motivation. I always, uh, this is so important, good motivation, whatever you do. And we need to recognize our uh, human nature, uh, who we are. Um, without sort of these qualities, uh, life will be uh, pointless. Uh, that's the, this memorandum which is actually um, uh, talking about. So without, we have power to make our life wonderful, beautiful uh, with these qualities. But without these qualities, then whatever you have, the, the samsara is pointless. So because samsara is motivated by uh, bad habits, like, you know, uh, these afflictions, ignorance, attachment, aversion, etc. And that's why uh, all activities with samsara are pointless, you know? Otherwise, why life is pointless? La the samsara activities within samsara are pointless, but motivated by ignorance, attachment, anger, then uh, we, all activities within samsara are pointless. So, um, you know, we should uh, develop all these human qualities um, so we have more capacity and peace, uh, you know, so important. And uh, 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 the way of life can be free from suffering, and it can be beautiful, and it can be uh, uh, very meaningful uh, if we um, uh, practice and uh, uh, develop our human qualities. But right now, uh, the quality of human life is kind of diminishing. So that's not good. Uh, so um, we don't uh, realize the essence of samsara. Uh, and we will sort of naturally harm others by our negative emotions, negative motivation. So that is uh, what he meant by all activities within samsara are pointless. Um, and um, uh, otherwise, uh, not necessarily right, the all activities within samsara are pointless, right? But if we have this motivation is so strong, uh, the selfishness, very, very bad. Uh, so whatever we do uh, based on this selfishness, then everything is pointless, mm, you know. Um, so 
uh, I think uh, the most uh, of our main main problem with this samsara is too much greed and having very strong desires, you know, um, that's the thing. So there is a no sort of ultimate uh, satisfaction in our minds. Mm, I think that is uh, our main problem. Um, too much greed and desire is the cause of suffering. It is suffering, you know. So from the Buddhist point of view, uh, the best way um, to take care of samsara is first to understand what samsara is, what life is. Uh, you know, the Kardamba masters say that if you are attached to samsara, then you do not have renunciation mind. Uh, so um, renunciation is actually understanding the essence of samsara, okay? Uh, so when I use the renunciation, this word, you know, sometimes I'm a little bit uncomfortable because you sometimes, um, when I explain the renunciation, sometimes you mis misunderstand. But the thing is, renunciation is actually understanding the essence of samsara. Okay, otherwise people usually think about object when we talk about um, attachment. When Kardamba masters say, if you are attached to samsara, then you have no renunciation mind, right? So when we say that, people usually think about object, you know, when we talk about attachment and renunciation. For example, I am attached to this and that, you know. Um, let's say, you know, I want to practice renunciation, okay? Renunciation, uh, uh, Buddhism is actually, there's three things, renunciation, practice three things, renunciation, bodhicitta, and emptiness, that's it. That's a Buddhism. But when we say renunciation, renunciation is sometimes, if you think about, uh, you give up everything, like you think about the objects, when we talk about renunciation, then it's not good, you know? So, um, so if, if, let's say, if I want to practice renunciation, so that means I have to give up my things, you know, my things. No, you don't have, you, you don't have to do that, you, you, you know? Um, uh, the, the, the question is, you know, do you have renunciation mind? For instance, once you uh, give up, we give up these things. For instance, I'm attached to this guy. And then if I give up that, then do I have uh, the attachment or renunciation mind? Not necessarily, because you uh, have not uh, diminished your attachment, right? Uh, renunciation, when we talk about renunciation, uh, it's not give up your property or thing. Give up your attachment. And that's the, that's the thing, right? So if you have, if you don't diminish your attachment, your attachment is still there once you give up everything, but your attachment is there. So as long as you have attachment in your mind, it doesn't really matter how much you give up your belongings. So if you don't remove the rule of uh, the uh, tree of attachment, it doesn't matter if you cut, uh, if you cut off the branch of this tree, the tree will grow again, you know? So it doesn't matter. So don't misunderstand when I talk about renunciation. So it's not, it's not the teachers say, it's not um, your belongings, give you a problem. Uh, it is attachment and desire uh, that are the problem, that are inside you know, your mind, not the object. So we must eliminate uh, desire and attachment uh, itself uh, through practice, through practice. Uh, so practicing renunciation is not giving up your property, don't misunderstand that. But having less desire and attachment inside of your mind. Uh, 
So once you don't have attachment and desire, you can have everything. You can have everything. That's the thing. Uh, so uh, we have to, when we talk about life in samsara, we need to understand the essence. Um, so if you change your mind through dharma practice and uh, um, use sort of this precious human life, um, then there is enlightenment. It's enlightenment uh, on this mind. You will be able to uh, establish happiness um, and uh, uh, having more um, peace of mind depends on our attitude in daily life, daily life, on how much you are able to practice the good heart uh, each day. Uh, as long as we do not uh, protect sort of our mind from the disturbing um, emotions, disturbing thoughts, uh, and sort of allow uh, your mind to be controlled by them, uh, then your samsara has no end. So means there is no enlightenment. There's no enlightenment. So after we understand samsara, uh, teachers say we should realize the true nature of samsara. That's why, uh, you know, for the greater great the meditators, great uh, masters, there is nothing to feel bad about samsara sort of experiences because samsara itself is in the state of liberation. So that's the thing. Uh, but if we don't recognize, then Muhammad here says, you know, all activities within samsara are pointless. Uh, but for him, he really thinks samsara is pointless? I don't think so, because he uh, is, is, he was, Muhammad Rinpoche was a, a, you know, bodhisattva, real bodhisattva. Uh, I don't think he's uh, sort of, uh, he thinks like, you know, um, uh, samsara is pointless. Uh, but if we have, the, you know, all these activities uh, based on negative uh, motivation, then uh, everything is, uh, you know, pointless. Uh, but but like ordinary people, you know, um, perceive sort of negative emotions uh, just as negative emotions uh, because they don't have a method for looking um, negative emotions clearly. And then uh, there is no realization of wisdom. So we, we all know that, right? So that case, samsara is very difficult. So um, all activities within samsara are pointless. And uh, uh, like a hello, bamboo tree, you know, bamboo, and unreliable. That's the, that's the, that's the text says, unreliable. Um, so this means everything changes. Unreliable means like everything changes from moment to moment. Nothing that arises has in sort of inherently uh, existing essence. That's why unreliable. Unreliable means change. Um, once we understand this change, then we can... Uh, reduce our attachment to samsara. Oh, samsara is unreliable, right? Means like change all the time. And we can see that uh, moment we are born, we are subject to death, right? That kind of things. It's very easy to know. So it's, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, not uncertain. It's certain. Um, it will happen. It will happen to us, right? So we all are going to uh, I mean, I'm talking about negative. When we uh, talk about samsara, we have to understand these things, you know. Uh, so it's really happened to us. One day, you know, we're, we are going to die. So at that time, uh, how much you have capacity? 
how much your capacity. If you if you don't believe future life, uh, I don't know. If you believe future life, this life is everything's good. I think everything's good. No complaint. Everything's good. But the thing is, future life. Your future life depends on because see the samsara is like goes around and on. So you make this, uh, you know, Buddhist. They call it, uh, the karma, but it's it's habit. Karma is your habit. Do you have a bad habit? Do you have good habit? So if you have bad habit, you will experience that. So uh, uh, that's 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 very important. So that's first sentences, and then. Um, uh, the text is, uh, and, and there is no certainty as to when death will strike. Still, since death is certain, limit idle plans and speculations. Chiwa and the young, I just give you the written transmission too. Chiwa and the young, Namjong Chamila, Jijan Chingi, Lorna Tongni Sirs. So now, we're talking here like we're talking about death. So when I heard uh, about death or I saw uh, someone is dying, uh, it was very uncomfortable. It was very uncomfortable because selfishly, you know, oh, I'm going to uh, experience this too one day, sooner or later. So, you know, then maybe I'm, I it's not my motivation is i maybe my not my compassion you know when i see or when i uh, heard you know someone is dying it's it's a very uncomfortable but selfish again so oh, this happens to me one time so uh, but the, but the the purpose of uh, contemplating death is to develop practice dharma develop practice dharma and to diminish attachment to this life only this life, you know. <laughs> so, oh, so when we talk, uh, think about, uh, you know, or uh, contemplating death, uh, then you will see, oh, uh, death is certain. So, if I attach to this and that, what is the point? I have to leave this behind and just, you know, so then that helps you to sort of diminish your attachment to, so again, the attachment is the, the cause of suffering. Do you understand that? Do you agree with that? Of course, desire, attachment, that is the thing. Attachment is the cause of suffering. Why do we have attachment? Because of ignorance. Why do we have ignorance? Because actually this selfishness. Everything, everything, the problem is selfishness. So, so therefore, uh, why Buddhists talk a lot about death? Because of when you contemplate on death, it helps you practice. It helps you to develop your practice, Dharma practice. It helps you diminish uh, attachment. Uh, so, um, that's the thing. And if we sort of become emotionally afraid when thinking about death, then teachers say you are not contemplating it correctly. Uh, so uh, it's very important to understand that. And meditating on these things should make our minds calm um, and compassionate. So the point is uh, necessary is to realize that the time is short. The time is short and death is certain. Because of that, try to do something good and meaningful each day, every day. That's the point. That's the point. Then you have no regret. Whenever death is sudden, right? Sudden. And so when it comes, you are happy. Oh, my, 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 my life is so meaningful. I did this and that. So, you know, you can rejoice in that. So that's the thing. That's why, uh, that's what I do, try to do. Like, you know, I'm not uh, like waiting for my death, you know. But try to do something good. Again, I'm saying this again and again. You have to... Keep in mind, if you uh, 
agree uh, what I said, these things. Something, try to something good, not necessarily huge, but, you know, something good. Try to something good, try to meaningful each and every day. That's the thing. This, as I said again, we are in between past and future. So this moment is the most important that we have. If you are happy, you have a happy life. If you are suffering, you are you have some. You are unhappy. You have bad, bad life. So that's the moment. So something. Remember, the time is short. Every day, each and every day, think about oh, time is short. So I have to do something good. Uh, means if you do something good, means based on uh, good motivation. That's not selfishness. That's the thing. So if you completely, whatever you do, something even like small, small thing, based on your good motivation, that's huge. That's really meaningful. Uh, so if you do that every day, each and every day that you have a meaningful life, that's the thing. So, and, and then what important is at least you should enjoy. That's what I'm doing. Enjoy and be happy with your life and try to avoid harming others. That's the thing. That's the essence of your meditation, essence of your life, essence of your practice. We all, we all can do that easily, not hard. Uh, you know, try to, uh, you know, do something good and try to avoid harming others physically, mentally, verbally, you know, so then you have a meaningful life. Then you will be very happy, very, very happy. And uh, um, as your attachment and uh, clinging to only this life uh, uh, sort of, you know, um, if you do something good like that, then, you know, this cleaning, right, cleaning, grasping, or attachment, uh, this life decrease. Then you start to understand the purpose of this life. That's the thing. Once you see these things, then you understand what is the purpose of life. And then you will begin to engage uh, in spiritual dharma practice. You will understand the benefit of practice. Uh, and then you start to uh, have the idea that nothing worldly lasts forever. And through that, you can have some experience of contentment and satisfaction. So that makes you really, really happy. This is from my own experience, you know, and comfortable you know, and easy to take care of your life. You know, uh, one way life is complicated, but the other way is easy. If you do these things correctly, easy to one person, you know, life is very easy to take care if you do uh, correctly do these things. So thinking about practicing death has many purpose. Not negative. Don't think about like thinking or contemplating on death is negative or uncomfortable. N not that. If you have that kind of emotion, then you are not correctly practicing on death. Okay. So, mm, so you know, uh, um, first, you know, through uh, thinking about death, you can develop a strong motivation for practice one benefit, and then strong interest in dharma practice, dharma will come, dharma will come because you have that motivation. And then really start to practice. You want to practice because you understand the benefit of life and meaningful life. You understand the essence of samsara. And then, you know, uh, the benefit of understanding death is uh, becoming satisfied with whatever you have and again in sort of interest in liberation. With that uh, motivation, you have great chance to attain liberation. 
That's the benefit of death. That's the, the sentences. My friend, which is sentences, okay? Now, meditation. Learn, practice dharma, contemplating, put them into your practice, meditation. Three things. But the most important is meditation. Because if you don't meditate, if you don't practice, believe me, you understand everything about Buddhism, or you have a great, you know, you have this knowledge, it doesn't help you. Um, if you, for instance, today we have only one word, let's say like death. If you contemplate on death or think about death, meditate on that, it's really, really good. It's really good for you. Will, you will uh, have so wonderful experience in your mind, and then that makes your life meaningful and makes you really happy. And then eventually you really want, right now, like we are going to try to, uh, you know, avoid, you know, harm others like that. But then when you meditate on this, and then eventually, not only not harming other, but you really want to help other. That's the thing. Best. That's a very good motivation. Then you will think, like, how can I help others, right? So there are many ways you can help others with your capacity. But the best way to help others to teach to people uh, very good motivation. If you have like motivation, like you know, when you teach, like become a fame, think about money, all these things, your teaching is pointless, no meaning. Uh, if you have a great motivation, then you teach even like one sentences, one word to other, great benefit. That's the best way to help other because. You have to understand that we all, Buddhist, you know, point of view, like all beings possess the Buddha nature. That's the thing, like the capacity, the energy, the essence of your mind. We all have that. That's the, that's the bottom line. On top of that, you can help or show them that kind of Buddha nature or, uh, you know, and then they will realize that. And then that is the liberation. So through that capacity, uh, then they can help others. So we all need help, right? So people are um, uh, suffering because, as I said, uh, we have a great human qualities, but it's, it's kind of like diminution, uh, this, this uh, you know, uh, um, and uh, so then uh, the teachings, only, only the teaching can help uh, to develop uh, human nature, human qualities. So therefore, meditation, so in order to help others, you need actually experience. Uh, you need to, first, you need some sort of, you need, in order to help others, you need capacity. You need some experience. Uh, then. Uh, Otherwise, you can't help. Uh, you can't teach. So, so you need to practice. You need to meditate in order to gain that capacity. So therefore, meditation is very, very important. Very, very important. So now we're going to practice. Uh, today, I think uh, the uh, object list, object list, shamatha. I think uh, we're going to practice objectless shamatha uh, in this meditation session. You, you all know that, right? Uh, you all know what is objectless uh, shamatha. We all know that. That doesn't mean you have that. Doesn't mean that <laughs> your mind is peace and uh, you know, like, uh, like that doesn't mean that. So therefore, we need to meditate it on you know over and over again so um, so the thing is again first first what you need 
uh, correcting your motivation. That's the thing. Um, if you have a, like a not good motivation, you come here today, pointless again. So uh, we all need good motivation. Um, so uh, good motivation is, doesn't come in your mind like automatically. So you have to uh, correct. You have to correct your motivation because um, one person has one mind, so you can control that. Uh, sometimes can't, but most time we can, because uh, you all actually are good practitioners. I really believe that. So you know your mind. You have some degree and experience, uh, so you know how to control your mind. Uh, but group meditation is actually very powerful, though, uh, better than one, you know, um, individual meditation. So, you know, it's really good. I think uh, come here together, practice together is very, very fortunate. I think if you recognize, that's very meaningful, very fortunate. So please correct in your motivation. Um, I, I hope you already did. But uh, if you did, then, uh, then correct again. Never, never, never let, okay? Uh, anytime you have to, because we have the, but there is, a, you know, this self, selfish things, you know? So always me, me, my, mine, right? So always that. So whenever you think that you have to rem remember motivation, so correcting your motivation um, means like you should sort of generate a, a, a positive motivation for living beings and you would think something like uh, you know like uh, uh, I'm going to meditate I'm come uh, uh, come here today and to listen teachings and meditate uh, so that all beings will be free from suffering and attain liberation that's the thing that's your motivation it doesn't mean once you have that motivation really all beings will be free from suffering or attain enlightenment that's not your job your job is uh, you need that kind of motivation so then your virtue is grow and limitless uh, so uh, you have to change uh, your uh, ordinary mind um, that's the first thing uh, whenever not only today though not only today whenever you meditate that's the first thing you have to correct your motivation that's the first thing after that uh, uh, if you are Buddhist uh, visualize Buddha Shakyamuni in front of you just not in detail but uh, um, Buddha you know, just just Buddha is like um, my protector. So I'm I'm meditating in front of him like that, and then uh, you should look in at your mind, right? Once you that's the thing. No detail and visualization, Buddha Shakyamuni. Once you uh, visualize, he's he's here. Uh, uh, so I'm not going to teach in detail, but there is a benefit. So if you do that, so. So just uh, just he is there, and then you should look in your mind, and then kind of relax on it. Um, people always say whatever you do, relax, relax. But it's, uh, try to relax on that, and um, uh, um, whatever sort of um, arise in your mind. So you just uh, don't follow that. So uh, you may have thoughts. Or you may have very sort of a um, few thoughts. You may maybe you don't have thoughts. Whatever is arising is just fine. If you have thoughts, uh, don't worry about that. Uh, so when you do have thought, try to recognize. That's the thing. Try to recognize uh, these things from my own experience. But we should do that. Um, uh, if I, if you know, if I'm correct, you know, then it, it, it will be good for you. If I'm not correct, you can just uh, uh, forget it. But uh, so uh, when I do is when I meditate, I have so many thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts. You think, oh, you think he's, he's a teacher and he practiced Buddhism 30, 40 years or probably right now he's liberated. No way. Um, <laughs> so... 
So I have lots of thoughts. So we are same, nothing different. So I have lots of thoughts, but I have uh, I have lots of method and instruction. So that's the thing. So when I do have thoughts, then I try to recognize the thought and then try not to sort of judge it. That's the thing. Uh, if you judge it, then one after another, then there's kind of like, uh, you know, you will lose your meditation. So if you notice yourself um, uh, saying like, this is good, this is bad, this is uh, wonderful, I have experience, am I, am I med- uh, liberated or something like that? So <laughs> some people, when they meditate, they do like, you know, these things like daydream. They do a lot of daydream because now <laughs> you are just uh, sit and then try to relax and then you are lots of thoughts and then follow all, all of that. That's not good. That means like don't judge it. When you have thoughts, just recognize. Just to notice that uh, the judgment is also just a thought, right? Everything is thought. So judgment is a thought. So recognize it and uh, then return to your awareness uh, and relax, try to relax and observe. And once your mind calm, right, once your mind calm, then enter more deeply into the experience of um, self-awareness and then uh, relax on that, relax on that. And if you notice uh, your mind wonder, uh, you can also uh, 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 say in your mind, like uh, um, sometimes I say, La Man Chin means like, Guru, think of me. Uh, sometimes uh, it helps me, you know, when I have, sometimes it's very easy. Uh, I don't know why, but this may be like body or the, the environment and everything. Like sometimes I meditate very easily uh, without thoughts and very good. Sometimes it's very hard. Uh, try to recognize thoughts and uh, try to relax, but it's really hard. So then at that time, I think I need some blessing. So then I say, like, Guru, think of me. Um, I say that. Um, uh, and then uh, um, sometimes I visualize Buddha again. Uh, or teachers again, and then focus on sort of uh, their blessings, and then try to relax again. It helps me. So, and then I do not only that, and then when I, when I do that, and then return my meditation again. So that uh, kind of helps me a little bit. So, um, um, watch whatever arises in your mind. Um, don't follow, don't judge, just to recognize and relax in awareness. That's all. Got it? That's all. So we're going to uh, meditate. Um, let's, uh, we have this. Let's 10 minutes. Meditate 10 minutes. Can you do that? Okay. If you can, you can, you can take a break. No problem. <laughs> Five minutes, one minute. Usually, say teachers say like uh, uh, short meditation is very good. Short meditation, uh, frequently. That's that's another instruction because it's hard sometimes, right? But if you can and meditate, just uh, objectless shamatha, uh, and uh, um, meditate on that for uh, ten minutes, please.